Hi friends, this video is all about how not to prepare for the gate exam. Again, we have done tons of videos on how to prepare for various aspects of the gate exam, but this video is equally important to know how not to prepare for the gate exam. Again, most of what we're going to discuss in this video comes from our own discussions with lots of faculty members, including very senior faculty members at universities like the Indian Institute of Science and various IITs. It also is based on our discussions with lots of hiring managers, senior engineers, staff engineers and principal engineers at the top product based companies. It is also based on our, on our own interactions with lot of gate toppers over the last few years and also a lot of gate toppers through boot camps that we conduct at universities like the Indian Institute of Science. Now, at its very, very core, if you look at the gate prep, most students prepare, the, prepare for the gate exam with a pure exam centric view. Again, please understand that this is the short term view. This is how you should not prepare for the gate exam because the concepts you learn in the gate exam are foundational in computer science. They are the ones that will stay with you for literally the next 40, 50 years of your career. So please take a long term view of the examination. Don't take a short term exam centric view itself. So if you, if, you, if you want to know what is the right approach, try to build strong CS foundations. That's what GATE is trying to anyway test for. Build strong foundational problem solving skills. So try to make your preparation foundation centric, problem solving centric and equally importantly, practical knowledge centric. You have to know why are you learning a technique. You have to know where to apply and how to apply these things to real world problems in software engineering, machine learning, distributed systems, cloud, IoT, whatever it is. So we see a lot of people who are very exam centric, who don't focus enough on the foundations, problem solving or the practical knowledge. We see very, very few people focusing on the practical knowledge, which is going to be very, very bad for you in the long term. Because you're putting in so many hours of effort, you want all the effort that you're putting in for the gate prep to be useful for you in the long term, not just for your short term gate, uh, gate prep itself, right? So let me give you an example of this, right? So a lot of people actually just solve some few thousand gate pattern questions. There's nothing wrong with it. That will surely improve some of your problem solving skills. But in, in the process of doing so, they forget to ask the most important questions when, they, when they're preparing for gate. For example, let me give you a simple example. Take the concept of cash, right? That, that we encounter in the systems, right? Operating systems and you know, also computer organization, etc. Very few people that we see who are preparing for gate actually know why are we using a cache? How do we use a cache? When to use a cache, when not to use a cache? Why did somebody invent the concept of a cache? Right? So having this foundational real world applied understanding is as important as problem solving skills. Right? So again, to be very honest with you, you should solve problems because if you solve problems, it will build your problem solving skills. I just, just told you, right? Problem solving skills are important. There is no doubt about it. But so is practical knowledge, understanding why a concept exists in the first place. Having extremely strong foundations is equivalent to having the ability to answer these questions on why a concept exists in the very first place. Again, we see a lot of gate coaching to be very exam centric, which is unfortunate. Again, a lot of students don't ask these questions. Again, this is happening more and more recently because most of gate coaching has become exam centric while it should be actually foundation centric, problem solving centric and practical knowledge centric. That's why in applied gate course, we focus a part of our time we spend about 10% of the whole course content itself on telling you why you are learning this concept. Where is this useful? What are the practical implications of it? That is equally important for your long term. And this is a must in your gate prep. And I hope more people who are teaching for gate not only do it pure exam centric, but also focus on real world centric stuff. Okay, so with that, now your question should be, what is the method that I can follow? to build some of these skills in addition to solving a few thousand problems in gate prep. So it's very simple. Pick any concept of your choice. Pick B plus trees or pick paging, pick finite state machines, Bayes theorem, pick any concept in gate. Ask a bunch of fundamental questions when you're learning these. Why are you learning this concept? Why did this technique even get invented in the very first place? What if B plus trees are not there? Why did computer scientists invent paging? How does it work? When to use this technique and when not to use it? And of course, you will learn what is B plus trees or what is paging and where to apply it. In which instances can you apply and which instances you can't apply a specific concept. 
Again, asking these simple questions, why, how, when, what, where, for every concept doesn't take much time. It only takes maybe an additional 5% or 10% of time. Because in gate prep, you often learn what is a concept. You often learn that and you also learn how a concept works. For example, you know B plus trees, take B plus trees, right? You know what is a B plus tree because you learn it in your gate prep. You also know how a B plus tree works. But oftentimes you don't ask why a B plus tree even exists in the first place. Or when is it used? Where is it used? So please ask the other remaining questions on why, when and where in addition to what and how also. That's one way to build both your practical knowledge and also have strong foundations. Okay, so for example, just, just a simple question here, right, that I'm just giving an, as, as an example. Why did scientists come up with the concept of paging? Why did mathematicians come up with the concept of a finite state automata? Why did even people apply, why did people come up with Bayes' theorem? If I give you a simple real world problem in medicine, which, where you require to apply Bayes' theorem, can you solve it? Right? Simple questions like this. Now, again, to be honest with you, asking these questions, like how and what will certainly be helpful in the gate, but asking the rest of the questions will build your foundational skill and also contribute immensely to your practical knowledge. Because if I, if I have to be honest with you, when I was preparing for gate myself on my own, I asked many of these questions, maybe not all the questions, but a good chunk of these questions. And that's how all of what I learned 15 years back in my gate prep, I still use it day to day. I still use them when I have to write a piece of software or when I have to design a machine learning model, right? So again, please understand that you can easily build problem solving skills if you have strong foundations with a little bit of practice and mapping. Mapping is also important. I'm not saying you should not solve problems. Please don't misunderstand me. Mapping is all about, give it a new problem. Can you map it to the patterns of other problems that you've seen? And if you have strong foundations, if you know why something exists, if you know where to use it, Right? In addition to a little bit of practice of a few thousand problems, and if you build the prop mapping skills, you're anyway good at problem solving to start with. Right? So that's super duper important. Again, if you see a lot of interviews that universities conduct after the gate exam, again, more and more universities are using gate exam as a screening criteria. They conduct their own coding exams or their own interviews after the examination. So in such a case, if you see a lot of interview questions, that universities conduct post the gate exam for admission to various programs. These are the types of questions they often ask. Why, why does this technique even exist? Or where do you apply this technique? Or where do you use this technique? Of course, there are some interviews where they might ask you to go to a whiteboard or write some simple code or prove some simple things. But proofs are simple and straightforward. If you know, if you can answer these questions, proofs are straightforward, right? So, Building this foundational knowledge and practical knowledge will even help you in the interviews after your gate exam. That is super duper important. Again, we've had a lot of discussions with faculty members who interview master's degree students or who interview students after their bachelor's degree, after they're screened through gate exam at various IITs, IASC, etc. And some of the questions they ask are very simple. Why virtual memory exists even in the first place? Or why normalize a database? Why should I even bother about it with terabyte scaled uh, disks that I already have? Storage is no more a problem. We are not living in 1980s. Why should I even normalize a database? These are very important questions. These are, very que these are the very type of questions that you'll encounter in the actual interviews for admissions to master's program at some of the IITs and also even at Indian Institute of Science. So again, we see this from the hiring managers as well as faculty members at a lot of universities. One of the biggest complaint is People who come through gate, they cannot code reasonably well. And I agree partially to this. Okay, a lot of hiring managers and a lot of faculty members. They, this is a fundamental complaint that they have. Again, to be honest with you, unfortunately, gate doesn't test your programming skills, which is unfortunate. But if you look at universities like IIIT Hyderabad for their PG entrance exam, this year they have started adding coding questions. And in their interviews, they focus on a lot of questions on why a technique exists, more foundational stuff. Similarly, even after the gate exam, we've seen this with the Indian Institute of Science recently. We're also seeing it with other IITs trying to do this in the future years, that after the gate exam, they want to conduct a simple coding exam. And of course, their interviews will be very similar to the foundational knowledge on why, where, how, and things like that. So please also focus on coding. Please don't ignore it. Now you might say, hey, how should I how should I simply practice programming? It's actually very simple. You just code the basic stuff, the basic data structures, basic sorting algorithms, basic algorithms, basic concepts that you encounter in data structures, algorithms, operating systems, databases, implement them from scratch. 
If you implement a graph traversal from scratch, it'll teach you a lot. You'll become a good programmer. If you just implement all the data structures, algorithms, core concepts, and operating systems, DB from scratch, you'll become a pretty good programmer, right? Again, I understand that some of you may be short on time when you're preparing for GATE. If you're short on time, it's okay. Prepare for your GATE exam, build strong foundations, ask the important questions, but focus on coding right after the GATE exam is over. Your GATE exam will be over by mid-Feb. After that, please sit and code and code and code and code. To give you a simple example on what you can code, right? Take a simple example from, uh, from databases. Take a B plus tree, implement a B plus tree from scratch. It's not trivial. It'll take you maybe a week or two weeks, but it's well worth time spent, right? Because you're going to learn a lot about how to actually write code, implement an interesting data structure like B plus tree from scratch. Similarly, you can take simple competitive programming problems. They don't take a lot of time. They take, even for a beginner, they take anywhere from half an hour to maybe one and a half hours for a single problem. Take a simple competitive programming problem and write code, handle all boundary cases, write clean code, execute the code, write, write the code with good time and space complexity. It's as simple as that. Again, if you don't have time, it's okay, but please don't forget to do it right after the gate examination. Spend all your time on coding, building the coding skill, because this is what will stay with you in the long term. I cannot emphasize that enough. Even after you get into IITs or IAS or any of the top universities, at your placements, what are companies looking for? They're simply looking for your problem solving skills through data structures and algorithms and programming. This is mandatory because you're a master's degree student with a computer science foundational skills, right? So whether you're interviewing for a machine learning role or data science role, if you're, if a company comes to comes for placements to IITs or IASE, they will have at least one round of data structures and algorithms based uh, questions. And then of course, they're also looking for your specialization skills like machine learning, data science, distributed systems, etc. But please understand that the basic programming is mandatory even to perform well in the placements at IITs. Right? So in summary, my suggestion to all of you is this. Please ask these important questions on why, what, how, when, and where a technique is used. This might take you about five to 10% of additional time, but that's okay because learning this will will carry all of your effort that you're putting in for your get prep now. It will stay with you throughout the next 40 years of your career in computer science. And please code from scratch. If you don't have time, do it right after the gate examination. As usual, don't forget to solve problems. This is also equally important because if when you're solving gate problems from foundational viewpoint, you're always building the problem solving skills, which are also important, right? So I hope this gives you a perspective on what to also prioritize and how not to prepare for GATE from a pure exam centricity.